good. You can see between my boys, good back in their squid ale. What you're seeing on my screen is currently an end board that can be made off of one single Castier unicorn. Yeah, it's actually crazy. We're actually going from Castier straight to snake eyes now, and here's exactly how you can do it. So yes, this combo only requires one single Cash Tira Unicorn. There is a way to now bridge Cash Tira with Snake Eyes. You guys are probably wondering how, but again, I have to give a huge shout out to my boy Anthony Akros for figuring out these combos. Just been solitaring. The man is an absolute genius. Galaxy Brain plays, so I cannot take any credit for this, but I just thought this was amazing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do our standard cash combo using Unicorn. Mind you, this is often one Unicorn. You can definitely do a lot more when you have multiple combinations of cards, but for pure simplicity's sake, we're gonna search Cash Teratiosis, activate it, and then we're going to special summon out our Fenrir. Fenrir's effect is going to add a copy of Rise Heart. So yes, very standard cash combo. Now here's where it deviates a little bit. We are going to summon out the Rise Heart using the effect to reveal itself and special summon. Then we're gonna overlay these two for a level seven, a rank seven that is actually quite unique. Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon. You guys know where this is probably going, but this card says once per turn you can detach the material, special summon one level four winged beast monster from your deck. So we are going to detach a copy of our Fenrir to special summon out the Blackwing Z. Zephyros, the Elite. Now here's where things get interesting. You guys might have noticed, but we have not yet used the effect of Cash Tier Rise Heart to Banish because we do not want to modulate him to level seven. In fact, we want to go directly into a rank four, which bridges directly into the Snake Eyes called Infernal Flame Banshee. This is a new XYZ that came out of Agov. Everyone completely grades past this, but she is a generic rank four that says you can detach a material from this card, take one pyro monster from your deck and either send it to the graveyard or add it to your hand. So yes, this is literally bonfire on legs and we are going to take advantage of that to add a copy of Snake Eyes Ash. We have not yet used our normal summon. You can obviously add Populous as well if you choose to go that route, but since we haven't normal yet, why not just normal summon Ash? Now, the only drawback about this combo, as you may know, is we are restricted into XYZ plays because of Cash Teratiosis, as well as the effect of Cash Tira Rise Heart that revealed from hand. But obviously, you can circumvent this restriction when you do have multiple combo pieces where you don't actually have to rely on activating and resolving Teosis, nor do you have to rely on Special Summoning Rise Heart. In fact, we can actually Normal Summon it, which I'll show you guys in the next combo. But moving forward here, we are going to add the copy of Snake Eyes Populous. Populous effect is going to trigger Special Summon himself out, add a copy of the original Simple Spell of Snake Eye, or you can actually add tempo as well we can kind of demonstrate you know different ways depending on your hand then we're going to tribute the snake eyes ash and populist to summon out the flamberg dragon and use the effect of populist to rescale itself use the effect of the flamberg dragon to rescale our engraved fenrir because this means that we can then bring it back during our opponent's turn as an additional disruption we are going to activate the original in our hand to send that free populace to summon out a copy of Snake Eye Oak just to extend a little more. Reborn any level one fire monster. And now we are going to be able to overlay into our Leerlisk on some Blue Robin. Now, this card says you can detach when your opponent special summons a monster and then bounce that card back to your hand. Alternatively, you could search for the other Leerlisk that allows you to search for a copy of Didi Crow. So it's kind of interesting how one unicorn allows you to get here. You have the disruption in the form of Fenrir with the Flamberg Dragon for insane fall. Follow up if it goes to the graveyard, resurrect two. You have a free Blackwing Zephyr Elite that we have not yet tapped into yet. So this is in our graveyard. We can definitely take advantage of this if you don't actually want to keep the Fenrir on board for whatever reasons, or if you have another card in your graveyard that you actually want to bounce back in your hand. Let's say this is turn two and we've already used a hand trap like Ash Blossom that's in our graveyard. We can scale that with the Flamberg Dragon instead of the Fenrir, then bounce that back to our hand with Zephyros. So we effectively searched our graveyard for any card and returned to our hand, right? So that's really, really interesting. Uh, on our opponent's turn, we have Onsen Blue and then Flamberg to summon out the Fenrir. So really, really cool uh, concept here. Just off of one unicorn. So moving back here, we previously talked about the searching tempo instead of original. That's definitely something you can do as well. If you play terraforming this deck, obviously you can go into either the cache or you can search the tempo. So that's kind of another nice little trick that you can do in this deck. We're going to search for divine tempo, just activate that. And then that allows us to scale a copy of, let's say, Snake Eyes Birch or any Snake Eye that you want to return to your hand. Again, talking about Zephyros being able to return a card to your hand on the field at the cost of 400 life points. So, you know, being able to search that off of Divine Temple means that we can then bounce it back if we choose so. But first we go to Flamberg standard play and then Populous will allow us to scale something. We can use the effect of Zephyros to then bounce back the Birch. And then Birch will allow us to resummon itself as a potential extender. Obviously we are still locked into XYZs, unfortunately in this play, but this is just a demonstration of what is possible off of the Divine Temple of the Snake Eye because then on our following turn, on our opponent's turn, we 
have the effect of Flamberg to resurrect a Castier Fenrir, and then we have Insane follow up off of the uh, Birch, which can tribute itself during the opponent's turn to spend summon a Snake Eyes monster, or we can summon back Ash off the of Temple when our opponent commits a monster to the board, right? So. Just really, really interesting here. We can obviously go into Oak and then just reborn something just for follow-up, something like Populous Searching Original. This is just uh, one less disruption because previously we had the Ensemble Blue Robin, but now we're just like kind of going for the grind game. So it just depends on your hand what you want to do. It just opens up the option where Zephyros can bounce something back for you to search off of the Divine Temple. So it's just really, really cool how Unicorn now sequences into this full Snake Eyes uh, combo minus the Lynx, I guess. But I mean, we cannot minus Lynx, right? Guys, Lynx is the whole idea of Snake Eyes. So there are certain hands that allow you to Link Climb, which takes full potential of the Cashier or Bridge directly into the Populous Engine. And, you know, if you have a card like a Rise Heart already in Axis, as long as we have a way to get to Unicorn or Birth or some combination of that, it helps when you have Rathos because you can actually send this for free off of the Snake Eyes guys by tributing themselves to summon out something from deck. But it doesn't really matter if you don't have this because it just makes your combo slightly weaker by one body. Uh, we are going to go ahead and activate and search for a copy of Unicorn. I'll just show you guys what this is capable of, and you can kind of play around with it. I've definitely not fully optimized the combos. This is one that I actually did myself after experimenting a little bit with. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go Unicorn and then Normal Summon the Riser instead of Special Summoning. Guys, the only two things that lock you in a Cash Tira are number one, the effective Riser in the hand to Special Summon, and then number two, Cash Tira Teosis resolving. So if we Normal Summon Riser, we bypass that restriction where it locks us in XYZs. We're going to banish a copy of Fenrir, I suppose, because that's one we're missing. And then we're going to overlay because Rise Heart becomes level 7. We can actually go into the Arsenal Falcon here, use the effect of Arsenal Falcon to detach, and then summon out a Zephyros the Elite. And then from here, we can activate the effect of Cash Tira Birth to resurrect that same Cash Tira Rise Heart, which now becomes a level 4 again. So we can overlay with Zephyros, still not locked in XYZs, by the way, to go into the Flame Banshee. Unfortunately, we have used our normal summon in this combo, though. So we're only going to be able to uh, search for the Populous, but it doesn't really matter at all because Populous is going to reveal itself still to search out the original Sinful Spoils. And then from there, we can actually go off into the rest of our engine. So it doesn't matter that we really lost our normal summon. Again, this is off of the um, two card combos here we're gonna add the original symbol spoils and then we're gonna link off it doesn't like here you can kind of sequence it around i think i didn't really play around nibiru so there's definitely ways to optimize this a little more if you guys are really de devoted for uh Kestira, definitely something you can play around with gonna go into sunlight wolf here and just standard combos trigger the effect of populace to rescale itself we have multiple resources to send off of Snake Eyes, Ash, or Oak to Tribute, by the way, because we have cards like Birth that kind of remain on the table as free resources, as well as the Field Spell, if you happen to open that in this combo. And we also have the Zephyros, which I completely, like, guys, we have Zephyros for free in the graveyard, completely graze past that. Use the effect of the Snake Eye here just to summon out the Snake Eyes Ash. Ash can actually do a couple of things. You can actually search for a copy of Snake Eyes Birch, which is like a free extender. It says if you control a fire monster, you can spell summon this card from your hand. So it's decent. And then on the opponent's turn, you can tribute it to summon out like a Flamberg Dragon. So that's just something else you can do. And then we're going to use the effect of Ash to tribute itself plus the field spell. Again, if you don't have field spell, it doesn't really matter because it's just like one extra body to tribute. You can obviously tribute the birth or the Zephyros as well. Snake Eyes Oak is going to activate and then bring back any level one. And then from here, we can activate the effect of Zephyros. So this is what I mean. Zephyros becomes a free extender because we recycle back that catch to our birth, which can be held in our hand for follow-up for the consecutive turn to tap in our cash tier engine. Or you can actually play it and then use it to be sent off of Snake Eyes Oak here to summon out a Flamberg. So it's just like a free resource right so in this case we can go ahead and do that and then summon out the flamberg dragon and um from here we're just link climbing into our plays gonna go off and link variable you can use the effect of sunlight wolf here to trigger to add back any of your level ones for follow-up or you can even activate it to activate to add it back a, a copy of cash tier rise heart which is also a fire monster right so we can go ahead and do that so we have like cash tier engine and then next turn you can just normal summon banish teosis add back the finra or something along the lines of that and then from here, you can link off and just go into a Heat Soul, draw a free card. And you can just start link climbing. Like here, we're just going to go into Appalooza with two materials. Personally, I prefer going into Appalooza with two materials this format because uh, it feels like a lot of people are playing like t Triple Tactics Talent and Thrust. And if you have like a three or more negate Appalooza and you go ahead and negate something and they thrust or talents and steal it, you're really not in a good shape because they have multiple negates on their newly uh, summon Appalooza that they stole. Whereas if it only has two, we're committing 800 attack and then on our opponent's turn, if they steal it, they just have one negate, which doesn't really matter as much as if they had multiple, which might pose as a problem, right? So personally, I just like having a 1600 Appalooza as long as you have a way to protect it from dying by battle. 
Um, that being said, you can actually do it for three in this combo for 2400. Now, it does actually leave us with an extra body to make that happen whenever you open with a field spell. So that's just one thing to note. So here we're going to trigger the Flambrook Dragon, bring back these bad boys, and then summon the Princess. Princess effect is going to resummon and then allow us to scale the IP Mascarena. So in our opponent's turn, we have a way to protect Appaloosa by battle by making SP a little knight to banish something. And then here we can just go into the Amblo Whale. So you can see here, like, we have the extra body, right? Like, this could have definitely been invested into the Appaloosa to make it 2400 if you desire. But again, it just kind of plays in tactics personally, so I'd rather just leave this on board. We probably could have optimized this a little better, Might maybe just having the Populous here instead so that when it dies, you can scale something back. Alternatively, you could make a completely different end board if you want to go into, like, SP Little Knight. That's something that's possible as well. So alternatively, if we rewind back to this state, you could also go for something like the Ensemble Blue Robin as well. Uh, and then we have the IP Masquerina, so we can still kind of go into the SP Little Knight to protect both monsters. Other thing you can do is to go for the other leader list and search for DD Crow. That's something else you can do. So there are definitely a different plays that you can do. Uh, we can still go to Princess here as well, just res resurrect back the Flamberg and then scale the IP Masquerina. The only bad thing about this is you are locked into fire, so we're not going to be able to summon back the IP Masquerina. So I think here we actually need another extender to maybe link off the Promethean Princess so that way you just have this set up. But you guys can kind of experiment with this. Let me know because like there's a lot of ways to kind of link climb. Obviously the extra deck is really tight. Uh, there are also synchro options if you choose to play Jet Synchron as well so that's something else you can explore. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. So guys, what do you think about this abomination of a deck? Obviously, it is nowhere near optimized, but here's what I had so far. The nice thing about Kashtir is you can actually play Shifter. I know it does conflict with the Snake Eye stuff, but it hurts them a lot more than it does for us. Like, against a Fire King or pure Snake Eyes, Shifter is just crazy. They're only going to be able to end on something like maybe an IP or an SP, while we have the full Kashtir arsenal at our disposal, in addition to uh, very handicapped Snake Eyes lines. So, I mean, it's not awful. You know, normal summoning Snake Eyes Ash reveal Populous, that's still something like an SP Little Knight, which is Disruption. Then from there, we can just trade off into our cash engine and start playing. I, I think Shifter's a given. That's one of the main arguments to play Cash Tira, period. And then on top of all that, being able to bridge into our plays with the Arsenal Falcon, I think is important. You guys can definitely cut this deck down. It's not optimized, but I want to check in all the different things that you could do. You know, obviously with Witch's Knights, it's a level seven, so you can go off into your rank seven plays easier. And if we play Jet Synchron, you can obviously go into your powerful rank uh, level eights, like World Old Savage Dragon, equip a Link Rebo or something along the lines. When you equip Link Rebo, you can just send it off immediately for something like Original because Burl Savage just gains the counters and it doesn't require the equipped monster to be there anymore. And then, you know, Baron Fleur with the Formula Synchron generic Snake Eye stuff is the other plays that you can do with like more than two com two engine pieces, I think. So yeah, guys, what do you think about Cash Terror as a whole? Again, shout out to Anthony Eckroth for bringing this idea to my attention. And guys, let me know if there's something that can actually be done with this deck. If you think it's competitively viable or if you think it's actually just a meme, let us know in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.